Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down a dangerous severe weather setup that'll bring severe weather across the United States beginning today all the way through early next week. This will bring the potential for damaging winds, significant hail as high as four inches in diameter and as well as a few tornadoes. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today or first going to begin with areas like Oklahoma. We've actually been seeing some severe weather this morning that is still rolling through areas in central Oklahoma right now, and that's going to continue throughout the early afternoon, bringing a little bit of severe weather with mainly damaging winds, but this is basically activity that we saw from last night that's still continuing into the morning, so interesting stuff there. Further off to the north, we do have some shower and storm activity ongoing back up in the northern plains, none of which is severe right now as I'm recording this, but there will at least be some showers and maybe a few rumbles of thunder over that direction. Now, back further to the west we have a low pressure system that's about to be ejected from the jet stream what this essentially means is that we're about to see an increase of severe weather today and tomorrow and even as well as into sunday from areas in the central and southern plains all the way back into the ohio valley in the midwest so very interesting setup coming in a moment i'll talk about more on that in just a second and then back in the southeast united states we've been seeing a low pressure system over that direction for quite a while there is still shower and storm activity ranging from the gulf coast all the way back through the northeast this is kept cloudy skies across a large area of the east coast so obviously not really fun weather if you're along the east coast and have any outdoor plans but again that's going to continue for the next several days as that low pressure system just sits over there but there is some hope as we go into the weekend i'll show you what that looks like as we look at the jet stream the jet stream is fairly important right now these are your upper level winds as well and it gives us an idea of what's happening in the upper levels which is a big part of the weather that we have going on today and for the next several days so as we go into late today you'll notice that trough ejection back over in the western United States, strengthening upper level winds. This will help to increase the risk for severe weather across areas in the central and as well as northern plains. And believe it or not, we have an enhanced risk of severe weather today. I'll show you where that is in a moment. And further down into the southern plains, for example, there will also be a chance for severe weather. It is going to be a part of this low pressure system, but it's going to be a little bit different. Again, I'll show you more on that in a moment. As we go into late uh, Friday as well as into Saturday, that trough does move off to the east, so severe weather potential will start to increase across areas like the Midwest and the Midwest has been in a drought that has been increasing for the last several weeks and by the way my summer forecast that we had recently that was kind of what I expected an early on drought in the Midwest it might it might get better as we go later into the summer but definitely some concerns there with the drought that we have right now and that's obviously going to be a big concern as we go later into this month and as well as into early July now as we go into Sunday that trough does move off to the east we're going to start to see the threat for severe weather increase across areas in the Ohio Valley this is actually where we might see a significant severe Severe weather event potentially an outbreak of severe weather and then as we go into late sunday into monday that trough will start to move off to the east possibly some showers and storms along the east coast this low pressure system is likely going to sit there for a little while so some showers and storms from the southeast all the way back through the northeast united states does appear likely at this time and then we'll basically have a heat dome on going back down in the southern plains and into mexico where we could see some record-breaking heat all the way through this weekend and as well as into early next week areas like dfw are forecasted to have high temperatures is around 100 degrees so very hot weather is coming there let's talk about the severe weather potential for the next several days and we're going to begin with today there's actually an enhanced risk of severe weather believe it or not that's going to include areas back near nebraska south dakota and wyoming and we also have another area that we need to watch for very closely that's further to the south back in the southern plains there's actually a slight risk of severe weather that does include oklahoma and parts of texas now the biggest concerns for today will be large to very large hail damaging winds and potentially a few tornadoes right now though the large hail threat is the biggest concern across areas in the central and northern plains that is primarily going to be back near Wyoming and as well as back through South Dakota you'll notice that hatched area that does mean there's a chance for hail exceeding two inches in diameter and I would not rule out the potential for hail as high as four inches in diameter which is softball sized hail that's going to be out of those initial discrete cells that develop later today and then we also have another area that we need to watch for hail that's with those initial cells that develop again that's further down in the southern plains not nearly as favorable of a setup as we've had recently for hail but there will at least be a chance for hail maybe 
maybe up to about two inches in diameter. Now for the damaging wind threat, yes, it's Flying Fences Friday, and we do have a chance for some Flying Fences. There is currently an area that we have to watch for very closely across the northern plains, and as well as parts of Nebraska. That is where we could see damaging winds exceeding 70 miles per hour. In some isolated situations, we could see damaging winds go as high as 85, maybe even 90 miles per hour, so definitely make sure you're taking the proper precautions there, because we will see at least some scattered to numerous damaging winds crossing with that area of storms that'll develop later today across areas in Nebraska and South Dakota. Similar threat down in the southern plains. Damaging winds is the main concern as we will have a line of storms develop later today, and that will definitely be a concern for at least damaging winds and hail. Tornado risk, though, is really just across areas in Nebraska and as well as into South Dakota, Wyoming, and into Northeast Colorado. But again, the tornado risk does stay very low to zero across the central and southern plains. So if you're not in any shaded area, there is still a very low chance of an isolated tornado, but it's not high enough for the Storm Prediction Center to issue a probability. It would really just be out of one of those initial discrete cells that develop later today across areas in the western Texas area, maybe the Texas Panhandle. So still stay alert for that, but again, the probabilities there are low. So let's talk about the timing. We're going to begin first with the northern plains. That is where showers and storms will fire up this afternoon, primarily after 4 o'clock or so. That is when storms will fire up across areas like northeast Wyoming and as well as potentially parts of Nebraska and South Dakota. You'll notice as we go into the evening hours, storms are still going to keep firing up, a lot of which are going to be discrete. Those discrete cells will have the greatest chance for very large hail and potentially some damaging winds initially. Wouldn't rule out a tornado risk, but notice this by around 8 o'clock or so this evening, you'll notice a little line of storms beginning to form, and that's going to be a concern as we go into the overnight hours, because we'll eventually have a line of storms develop going closer to around midnight or so. That's when things really get interesting here, because we're going to go from discrete cells into a linear line of storms. It's going to take a while to get organized, but you'll notice as we go closer around 3 to 4 in the morning, that is when it becomes a bit more organized, but with daylight heating not existing at this point, the line of storms is only going to last so long. So when it gets closer to Iowa, it's going to be much weaker. That means that just some isolated damaging winds would really might be my only concern, and maybe a little bit of sporadic hail, and then as we go into the morning hours, things do definitely start to clear up a bit, just some showers passing by. And that leads to our next severe weather threat going into Saturday, which we could see some more significant severe weather in the Midwest. I'll talk about more on that in just a moment. For those in the Southern Plains, severe weather is possible. Again, for those back over in West Texas, those are where those initial discrete cells form. Overall, these are going to be the ones that produce the greatest chance for large hail and damaging winds. Isolated tornado risk, I think, still exists, but it's still a very low chance overall. Once we get closer to around 6 to 7 o'clock, we have a couple different areas of storms. This area is going to try to form into a line of storms. It's by no means a guarantee, but if it's able to, we could potentially see some st storms roll into areas like North Texas as we go past sunset. So you'll notice as we go closer around 7, 8, maybe 9 o'clock, Southwest Oklahoma and as well as North Central Texas, that is where a line of storms might develop. And if this does develop, this will ent eventually enter into areas like Southern Oklahoma and as well as North Texas, posing mainly a threat for damaging winds. There might be a little bit of hail mixed in there, but damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour is the main concern. And this is what's going to basically be the potential for some flying fences here on Flying Fences Friday. Now for the severe weather potential, as we go into Saturday, there is currently a slight risk of severe weather across areas in the Midwest. And you might even notice it goes all the way back down into northern Arkansas. It's a pretty large area. Main concern right now is going to be damaging winds and large hail. This is the damaging wind threat. Large hail is going to be the biggest concern, though. That is where we could see some significant hailstones as high as three to three and a half inches in diameter. And then the tornado risk for right now still remains low, but it's not that low. We do have a 5% probability there. We may end up seeing at least a couple tornadoes across areas in Iowa and as well as northern Missouri. Now, let's talk about a bit more about that timing, beginning with areas in the Midwest, because that's really where this is all going to be going down. We'll go into the morning hours. We'll have that line of storms pushing through early Saturday morning. That will be mainly damaging winds. By the afternoon, we'll have a low pressure system spinning off to the west. This is going to increase the spin with these supercells, which is going to increase the low-level jet, making sure that rotation is a bit stronger, and that is why we might see a tornado risk. But a lot of these cells that do end up developing will be discrete. So the ones that are discrete will have that increased risk for severe weather. By around 6 to 7 o'clock, we still have some discrete cells out there, but a lot of these are clustered together. So the ones that are clustered together could still pose some strong storm risks, so gusty winds and small hail, but I do think the risk for severe weather starts to get lower as we go into the late evening hours, and eventually by the overnight, those showers move off to the east, and that will set up for our next severe weather event going into Sunday, which actually might be more significant than Saturday. We could see an enhanced risk of severe weather. It just depends on how much storm coverage is being forecasted. Right now, this goes from Ohio back through northeast Arkansas, and the really, we do already have a hatched area, so again, we could see some significant damaging winds and significant hail. Wouldn't even rule out a strong tornado risk with this, but I think the damaging 
Raging Wind Threat is the highest. This is what it looks like on the future radar. We'll have a line of storms developing as we go into the late afternoon on Sunday. This is what's very concerning. We could very well see a line of storms develop, which could pose some very significant threats for severe weather on Sunday. So make sure you are staying tuned here on Max Velocity. We'll keep you updated with everything that you need to know before it happens. So make sure, again, stay tuned. Click the bell icon down below so you're notified with the latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're not already. This forecast is brought to you by Platinum Contracting.